the coronavirus comes about, we are prepared. We have the opportunity to show up and then we strike. Because who else is going to solve this problem? That's hard to imagine though. I think we're messing something up here. I was an inventor as a kid. It was in my blood. Most of my success at the National Laboratory as a chemical physicist was in invention. Yep. See, this looks fine. When I was in high school, I really liked doing research. I made a lot of inventions. Is it a regular cube, as we've seen before? About two months ago, we started to working on this coronavirus sensor system, and we got a lot of other experts to help us. I know it's fine, but let's make sure. The mission of the Lightwave Technology Lab is to invent and uh, develop novel optical microwave sensors to further advance new research frontiers. To invent and develop and deploy ultra high sensitive sensors. We are the de facto experts, one of maybe 10 groups in the world with this capability. We are proposing the cornerstones of a broad project to address uh, biohazards in public spaces, such as airport. The proposed corona sensor system actually involves uh, three steps in series. The first sensor is designed to detect normal aerosols or virus-containing aerosols. After the first sensor, the aerosols will go into the second process, we call it chemical tagger. And then all the aerosols will be sent to another biohazard spectrometer. And if we can bring this device to the airports and have people breathe into it, we might be able to say something about their state of health. You know, do they have uh, an illness or do they not? We're taking advantage of this cylindrical cage that we walk through at many airports. Just stand there still for three seconds and there's a device that scans across you. The first sensor, the one that we developed, we have it coming in from the top, it comes down through a pipe and then bends over and you're, you're face to face with it. So while you're doing this test, it asks you to exhale into the port. <sighs> and that directs your breath into the analyzer. We can take that information, feed it into the information that we get, separate out the particle size information, and just get out constitution. What is it made out of? First sensor gives us sort of a pass, no pass, where it does a pretty good job of figuring out who's sick and who's not sick, to the point where it errs on the side of, if it looks like you're a little bit sick, we're gonna flag you. And those who it deems not sick are truly not sick, like 100%. We're thinking about 30% are going to fail. With that group, in a very short time, we use the same breath that we collected to determine that they did not pass and gets prepared for more advanced sensor detection. If we can then use that more advanced sensor, the form of spectroscopy, to ascertain what illness they might have, then we can determine whether it's communicable or like just a common cold, or whether it's something more serious. And it doesn't just have to be coronavirus, it could be SARS, it could be something else. We have this squiggle from the breath. It's too much to understand and to analyze. So what do we do? We put it into machine learning algorithms. These algorithms take all the data, and it, the algorithms are trained. You do a lot of breath tests. People are sick, people are not sick, etc. All this information goes into this program, and it looks for patterns. In the near term, roughly a year, we would like to deploy the front-end sensor for clinical trials. In the long term, roughly around two to four years, we would like to deploy a complete sensor system that detects specific attributes of COVID-19 disease. It's a tube with a rod in the center of the tube, and they can make it in a machine shop 50 bucks. You can make it out of pieces of pipe from the hardware store. We have the analyzer for our detector. That, I'm guessing we can do maybe $10,000. It's that super spectroscopic detector that's downstream, that's charged with, is it rhinovirus, is it coronavirus? That's 125,000. The whole thing, you know, probably around 200K. It's been vetted, people have their say about it. Now it needs to be tried. Things are shutting down. How are you going to meet that need? Well, you're going to detect. You're going to confirm that things are safe. The interconnect actually is sticking out a little bit. Uh -huh. You yeah. think we pushed it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go.